Welcome back, Tightwads. Today we were fixing dinner and tried to put something in the microwave and it stopped working. You'll see if I put in some time and press the start button, the light comes on, but you can tell it's not going because the, there's no humming and the plate inside is not spinning. So we're going to remove the microwave, pull it out of the cabinet, and uh, see what's going on. You'll see the timer actually did count down, so all that is functioning but there are a few switches behind this portion of the microwave that could cause this problem. So let's get started. So since this microwave is in a cabinet, it has some vanity pieces to it um, that act as border around the edges. So we have four screws that we have to remove to get it out. And when you go to remove the last screw, make sure you're holding it in place so that it doesn't fall off the wall. And then this piece just slips right off. I'm going to set this out of the way. Now the microwave, you can see, is will lift up it's just sitting in here. You need a person to help you with this next step because when I pull the microwave out, it is plugged into the wall and the outlet is actually all the way back behind the microwave. It's very hard to reach back and unplug it without pulling the microwave out of the shelf. So I'm just gonna lift it up uh, straight from here and pull it straight out and let my wife unplug it from behind. Now that I have the microwave out, I just need to remove the back. And on mine, there are four screws. One, two, three, four. And you're actually removing the cover, which is just a shell that goes around the microwave, not the whole back piece. So on this particular one, there were some security screws. And you'll see they have a little post in the middle of them. Well, last time I opened the microwave, I took my Dremel tool and I cut a slot in those screws so that I could easily remove them with a flathead screwdriver. They do sell kits. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot or Harbor Freight or Northern Tool or something like that with the security tools that can remove these. But the easiest way is to take some kind of saw or in this case I used a cutting disc on a Dremel and cut a slot in them so that I could easily remove them with a flathead screwdriver. So I'm going to remove all the screws and I'll show you what's inside. Now with the four screws on the back and the four screws on the sides removed, I'll put my hands on the side of the microwave and put my thumbs on the back to push and I slide it backwards and the whole top lifts off. Be very careful when you have the top off because some components inside the microwave store power. The component that stores power looks like this right here, this silver cylinder. Now, I don't think that this one has any power stored because of the problem with the switch that we're encountering, but to discharge this, you can take an insulated screwdriver, rubber handle screwdriver, and you can cross across these two points on both sides, and then across the whole thing with the screwdriver to discharge it. I would still be very careful touching anything inside the microwave except for the parts that we're working on. The part that we're working on today are these switches. You'll see one switch is here, another switch is here at the bottom, and then one more switch right here in the middle. Now the, pro the most likely issue is one of our door switches. So I'm going to open the door of the microwave and you'll see that there are hooks, one on the bottom and one on the top. Those engage switches that either connect or disconnect a circuit making the microwave work. And if you look at where those click in, there's one switch here that is controlled by the door and one switch here that is controlled by the door. Most likely, my issue is related to this lower switch. I've had the same problem before and the reason is this lower switch controls everything except for the light. The top switch only controls the light and the light is working. So the heat, the turntable, 
all stem from the switch on the bottom of the unit. So now I just have to remove that switch, find out what kind it is, and purchase a replacement. So we'll do that now. All right, so since we think it's this switch that's bad down here, I'm going to remove the switch. And to remove it, there's a little plastic clip right here under the bottom. I'll lift it up so you can see the little plastic clip right here under the bottom. You'll push this clip in with a screwdriver. And then you'll be able to flip the switch down. So you just watch the process here. I'm going to use a screwdriver to push that switch, that clip in. I'll kind of support it with my finger on the back side while I do so. And I'll push that little clip in. And the whole switch will tilt down like this. I'll continue to rotate the switch until it is um, perpendicular to the table or the bottom of the unit and then it just slides right off. This little hole right here goes on the round post here. So this is what the switch looks like when it comes off. If your wires happen to be touching, this wire and this wire happen to be touching, that could be your issue. But if they're good and separated like mine are, then likely your switch is bad. To remove the connectors, I should just be able to pull them off. We'll start with the white one on the bottom. With our connectors off, you can now see the switch. And you can see that there's some writing on it. On this side, it says on right here, NO and NC. That means normally open and normally closed. It's important that our new switch have the same settings. On the other side of the switch, there are lots of numbers. And right here in the middle, we see that it's a 16 amp fuse right here. And then we see down at the bottom it is a 16 3A 250 volt. Those are the numbers that you'll need to know when you try to purchase a new one. You can purchase them online, but most places have an a sale shop where appliance repairmen purchase a lot of their parts. We happen to have one within driving distance, so I'll go tomorrow to pick up a new switch to replace this with. If you want to test these switches, there's an easy way to do so if you have a multimeter. My multimeter has a tone setting, which is a continuity tester. And all this does is either the pins are connected or they're closed based off how this button is depressed on the switch. So if it's open and they're not connected, when I push it down, they should be closed. If it's closed when they're connected and I push it down, it should be open. That's what normally open and normally closed means. To show you what I should hear is right now we're open and now we're closed. So I should hear the tone, open, closed, open, and closed. That's what the switch should do as well. So while I have it set on continuity here, I can put one of my leads in one hole and the other lead in the other. And when I press the button, you will not hear sound if the switch is not working. Since there's no sound now, there won't be sound either when the switch is depressed. You see there's no sound when I click the switch on this particular one. All right, so we have our new switch here. And for this one, the, remember the white bracket went on the bottom and what I do whenever I work on my stuff is I mark one side I took a sharpie and marked the top when I first took it off so I knew that that was the top when I'm putting it back on it just slides right back on that spade then the top one just slides right back on the top spade and you want to kind of pull them apart and make sure there's no nothing touching between these two connections right here because that will cause a constant connection which will make your door not work as well to put this back in, I have the hole in the switch that goes on the tiny post right here in the microwave. So that switch goes over the post and then all I have to do is rotate the switch up and it'll click into place. You'll see this part right here move just a little bit. It clips right into place. And you can't test your microwave with the cover off. Always make sure that your microwave cover is on prior to testing the switches to make sure the microwave itself is working. You can test them with the multimeter with the cover off, of course, but not 
turning the microwave on, never plug it in while the cover is off to do any testing. When putting the top back on the microwave, you need to carefully slide it on. I like to come from the front side here and make sure that this is flush with the top, I mean with the side, and that the top is flush here and it's flush here. There's still a little gap here, but I'll reach to the back with two hands and pull it closed onto the microwave. And then make sure that everything is flushly lined up all the way around before you try to put any screws in. You can also check your screw holes and make sure that you can see that the screws are going to go in correctly. Your screws should go back in effortlessly. You shouldn't have to force them in. If everything lines up correctly, it means that your top is on the unit correctly. Now don't forget we took off two screws on the each side and four screws on the back. So go ahead and get all those put back in. Once the unit is put back together, I like to plug it in and make sure everything works correctly. So I've already set the clock, which it always requires before you can get started. I'm going to put in 10 seconds and press start. We'll hope for a light on, a turning turntable, and that humming sound that we weren't getting before. And there we have it. The light is on, the turntable is turning, and we have the humming sound. So this unit is fixed and we can reinstall it in the cabinet where it goes.